Back live with you tonight uh, here on In Focus, and thanks for staying on. The local currency continues to be under pressure, reaching highs of 17 rand 65 cents against the U.S. dollar in early trade. This on the back of uncertainty following the release of the Palapala report. Investor sentiment is sluggish as markets await uh, more details on President Sir Ramaphosa's fate. The rand surpassed three-week lows on a day the currency should have been benefiting from a weaker dollar. Analysts say uh, where it not for a weaker dollar, the rand would be in an even worse position. But the currency, perhaps, I always call the currency, in a sense, the, the canary in the, in, in the coal mine. And, and the currency is telling a very different picture to what we, we, we're seeing. If, if, if we hadn't have had the Palo Palo report out last night, uh, I would have expected the rand to be stronger across the board on the back of our, our indices equity also being a lot stronger. So that really is sort of an uncertainty. And as you say, we, we don't know quite how this is going to play out. We don't have a clue how this is going to play out. It's going to happen over the days, weeks, and, and months ahead. But uh, the, the currency is telling us that there is caution. Yes, there's excitement about the U.S. rates and everything, but that weaker rand is, is, is really the red flag that we're seeing in the, in the markets today. All right, continue now our coverage of political reaction to developments arising from the Palapala panel report. We're now joined by the National Freedom Party leader, uh, Sheikh Imam. Uh, good evening, good to have you, and thank you very much uh, for your time uh, tonight here on In Focus. As we talk now, the rand taking a serious beating, uh, Sheikh Imam. Do you think um, uh, that there's something that needs to happen here in terms of bringing back stability and uh, limiting the damage uh, to the economy that is brought on? by this uh, presidential scandal. Well, very good evening to you and all our viewers out there. Yes, indeed, I think there's going to be immense damage done to the economy, but also the reputation of government as well. Not that we have been over a period of time, particularly in the last nine years. I think we all are aware that South Africa has been in the news for the wrong reasons. But particularly, I think, with the latest scandal on what has happened at the Palapala farm, and given the fact that, you know, the inquiry or the panel now has found that the president has been in violation of various aspects uh, of the Constitution and is out of office, I think, yes, indeed, it will have a negative impact. Of course, it's going to have an impact on the currency. There's no doubt about that. Do you think we are putting the, the cart before the horse by asking the president to step aside instead of, um, uh, I suppose, committing to the process that the National Assembly has established. It was your own process that said there will be a panel first that will determine whether there will be a prima facie uh, evidence that would uh, then determine whether a, 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 a committee should be set up. Uh, should we not follow that process through and have the president face the impeachment committee? Uh, yes and no. First of all, uh, uh, under normal circumstances, yes, that's what must happen. Of course, there is an impeachment committee in place. Uh, this matter is going to be debated on the 6th of December. And if necessary and if it is passed, then the impeachment committee will have to take over. And then the formal process of an impeachment will continue. But the other uh, concern we have is, is, and of course, by virtue of the ANC's own policy of the step aside, and I want to reiterate that this is not the first time that the president has been found wanting. Let me say we all know what happened particularly during the CR17 campaign and uh, the investigation into the monies in Osasa. We know the president was not very convincing, but he got over. If you look at the state capture report, what did the president say? He said, yes, indeed. We have received monies at times, the monies we got to know they were unlawful. However, we decided to keep the money because we are a big organization. That's totally unacceptable. Then you had the situation where the president, responsible for deployment and the war room at ESCOM, and we know companies associated to him benefited. What did he say there again? Yes, indeed. I was aware of some of the appointments and I was not aware of the others. But I had a choice. I had a, either had to keep my job by keeping quiet, but if I opened up, I was going to lose my job. So where again was your oath of office? Now the concern we have is that you have been entrusted by at least currently about 60 million South Africans to lead them. 
and you violated your oath of office. And that now raises a question of the integrity of the presidency in the country. And in light of that, we believe the right thing to do is to currently step aside pending the outcome of the investigations so even law enforcement can do what they have to do because we all know there's a perception out there and more often than not, it, 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 right. it's proven to be true that when you're in a position of influence, you're able to interfere in investigation. And if you see what the panel found here, one of the things is that the president used his influence uh, 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 with the president of the Namibia. That's right. So again, what does it actually tell you? Uh, uh, you know, that the president is in a situation where he would be able to influence law enforcement and others, and as such, it might be in the best interest of the country for him to recuse himself pending the final outcome of this investigation. Sheikh Imam, appreciate your time. Thanks so much for coming on tonight, leader of the National Freedom Party.